it's time once again to make a video about the various additions to my Java collection that I've made in the past weeks or months. And in this case, it has been months since I've made a collection pickups video. I had originally planned to do one maybe a couple months ago, and various things came up. Been a little lazy, I guess. But I did want to see if I could just squeeze this one in under the wire and get it done for uh, 2022 as opposed to 2023. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. What we see here is actually a brick-built Java on Throne made by Brick Sheepa, who is a person on Instagram who has just dozens and dozens of amazing original designs that he's made. A lot of it, most of it, I guess I could say, is for Star Wars stuff. And, you know, he's done a lot of Java-related ones as well. Things like, uh, well, obviously this, various versions of Java, even a Java clause for the holidays. And he's done Zero, the Hut Council, a brick-built Rancor, all sorts of stuff. If you like that kind of thing, and I have a feeling a fair number of people in my audience do, I would really recommend following him on Instagram. I'll leave a link to his page in the video description. In any case, uh, this one, as I say, is his design, and he kindly offered to uh, sort of give me the design through the LEGO Designer program so that I could see what it looked like, how it was put together, and he gave me a kind of a, you know, a list of parts that I could use to then get them on BrickLink, which is what I did. So I did source all the parts myself and assembled it myself, but that's his design. Now, he has actually gone in and revised his hut design a little bit since I made this. This has been a little while ago. He's uh, constantly kind of revising and improving things. But I think I like this design quite well myself. There's something about a brick-built figure that is really charming to me, I think. And uh, I don't know, I've just had this guy sort of sitting on my desk for many months now, <laughs> several months at least, and uh, he's been a little little mascot for me. Uh, I really think he did a good job with this design. So yeah, if you uh, want to see more of his work, by all means, check out his Instagram page. So our next item is something that's a little bit of a departure for me and this channel, I guess you'd say in some sense, but uh, it's a bottle of perfume. And this is something that you, uh, you probably wouldn't see made today, especially from uh, an officially licensed source like this, but this was originally released as a Celebration 5 exclusive in 2010. And so this is officially licensed. You can see here it says Celebration 5 exclusive limited edition. And on the back, it's got quite a bit of text here describing it. Uh, Slave Leia perfume for women. Chains cannot restrain your smoldering sensuality, even when the most despicable scum in the galaxy surround you. Whether you're on a daring rescue mission or are being held captive by a nefarious slug slash gangster, your regal bearing lets the world know that despite appearances, you're no one's servant. Fearless and inventive Slave Leia perfume includes floral top notes of white peach, lily, bergamot, heliotrope, and raspberry that r dry down to a warm, sultry mix of cashmere woods, musk, and night-blooming jasmine. I literally have no idea what that means, and I've smelled this perfume in, for, in reality, so, yeah, sort of take that with a grain of salt. Uh, Slave Leia perfume, more powerful than a thermal detonator, yet more comfortable than a metal bikini. Copyright 2010 Lucasfilm Limited. So uh, when I saw this come up, I was really interested just, you know, kind of as a uh, an artifact of its time. Uh, this is the actual bottle. You can see it's shaped kind of uh, in an hourglass, I guess you'd say. Let me get rid of this in the background here. And it's got a replica of her sort of manacle with the chain attached to it. And you can see it says on the bottle itself, Slave Leia Perfume. Now, this <laughs> particular bottle, anyway, uh, I bought at a discount. It wasn't really very expensive because it was partially empty. And also, uh, I discovered when it arrived, it was still kind of leaking. So it had leaked a little bit in the box and got all over the place. I Let me just say, long story short, I got pretty sick of how this perfume smells. It's not bad smelling by any means, but anyway, just a fun little item, uh, a little bit of something that we probably are not going to be seeing again, certainly from a licensed source like this. 
Speaking of Leia, our next item is this garage kit statue from 1995. Uh, we'll look at it in a little bit more detail in a second, but I kind of wanted to just give you the the full idea of it. I can't pull back far enough to get it all in frame, so I'm going to have to pan up like this. Uh, generally speaking, it's pretty good, at least until you get to the head, which could be better. It's not the best Carrie Fisher likeness I've ever seen by any means, although not the worst. And it also seems kind of too big for her body. I don't know about you, but that's that's the impression I get. Um, otherwise, you know, as I said, this is a garage kit, so this is, would have been sold as raw resin casting that you would have had to finish yourself and paint yourself. So someone painted this up really, really nicely, I think. They did a fantastic job on the skin tones. I don't think I could do better than that. And generally speaking, it's really well done, well uh, finished. A couple things to note here. One is that there's some stains here on the base, and I don't know what that's about. Actually, there, when I got this, it had broken off the base, and there was kind of a fairly thick layer of grime over the entire statue that I had to take a toothbrush and a little warm water to try and get off. Um, didn't was not able to get rid of this. I don't know what the deal is here. But if you notice here on the front, the throne gargoyles are actually the idol from Indiana Jones, which I thought was funny. And uh, if we go up a little higher, these hands are really well sculpted, I think, uh, even though they seem like they might be a little small for the body. And then, of course, we've got the head, which again, seems like might be a bit big for her body. But overall, I really can't complain all that much. So again, keep in mind that this was made in the 1990s, and there wasn't a lot of high-end stuff or even low-end stuff available at the time, really. So this was would have been the cream of the crop, probably. And, you know, it's also something that someone would have had to do on their own, paint and finish it all independently. So with that in mind, I think this actually looks quite good. So even though I have a lot of better likenesses of Carrie Fisher, for example, I think this is a pretty cool time capsule and reminds me of what it might have been like as a collector back in those days. In the mid-90s, I was actually living in Japan and had very little to do with Star Wars anymore. Anyway, as I said, this was very cheap. I think it was less than $20. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up. T-shirts are one area where I am not a completist collector. I don't try and get all of the T-shirts that have been created. I mean, it'd be really difficult. There's so many sort of print-on-demand things nowadays in particular that I just feel like uh, it's a losing battle in some sense to try and collect all of them. Uh, plus, there's all sorts of different variations that there could be, different colors, sizes. I don't know where you'd draw the line. So I just pick up things that look interesting to me, but I don't try and get them all. Uh, this looked interesting to me, and it was pretty cheap. Uh, I'd never seen this design before. It just popped up on eBay one day. It is Jabba Tucky, and as you may know, uh, the state of Kentucky in the U.S. is roughly this design, or this, this shape, I should say. And uh, yeah, this, this shirt shows Jabba and Salacious Crumb there in the shape of Kentucky, which I think is pretty awesome. This was originally sold, apparently, by the KY for KY, Kentucky for Kentucky um, online store, where it's just like all Kentucky-themed merchandise all the time. Didn't know about that either, but uh, in the course of looking up about where this shirt came from, I did find it. Uh, they don't sell this particular shirt anymore, unfortunately, but they do sell a bunch of other Kentucky merchandise, so if you're interested in that, I'll put the link in the video description. Our next item is this Jabman figure. You may be able to tell this is basically a mashup between Jabba and Pac-Man, which I am definitely behind. I like that idea a lot. Um, very interesting way of doing it. Now, those of you uh, who have been watching the channel for a while may recognize this model as being the one that I used for my life-size Jabba 3D print, and I've also printed it a few times uh, since then, or before then. Uh, I released this for free to the community, this model, that is, uh, with the idea that, you know, people should have a decent model Jabba that they could 3D print, but I wanted it not to be um, commercially sold, if possible. 
And so that's why I used a specific license, non-commercial license, that you're not supposed to actually sell anything with this uh, model in it. Um, Magda was not aware of that in particular because I guess they went through some sort of 3D printing store in Poland where they live, and it seems it seems as if there was some confusion uh, sort of on the rights to this thing. So what I'm trying to get across here is that really you're not supposed to be using this for this kind of project where you're selling a figure. But I decided to go ahead and say it was okay in this case. Uh, I mean, on a, you know, realistically, there wasn't a lot I could do about it aside from just kind of make a stink about it, which I don't don't really like doing. But uh, for future reference, please don't use this model for things that you're going to sell. It's just it goes against the commercial license, but you know, I, I decided to sort of give an exception in this case, and Magda was nice enough to send this to me from Poland as a, a sort of a, a apology gift, I guess you'd say. Anyway, this one, as you can see, as I mentioned, ma a mashup of Java and Pac-Man. We've got some little, uh, I really like this card art in the background, and we've got little uh, red balls sort of glued to the back of the, uh, you know, of the backer here inside this bubble. And then we've got also Jabba inside. I don't know if you can tell this very well, but he's holding a sort of a stick with a ghost on the end of it, as if he's uh, licking a lollipop or something. I'm not entirely sure what the inspiration was for that. Oh, maybe maybe it's just uh, meant to be the end of his hookah fight. I'm not entirely sure, but in any case, kind of a cute little design. And on the back, it says here, uh, Mother of Polish Bootlegs, Magda Nestor, special copy for Mighty Java's Collection. That's me, you may recall. <laughs> Thanks for your support. Uh, so this was like a, you know, a special uh, artist proof. Uh, you can, I I think, still buy these on the uh, DKE Toys website. So I'll put a link to it on the in the video description if, you, if you're interested. But uh, yeah, I just thought I would show that off. This next item I had my eye on for quite a while. It's a Jabba's Palace themed mug from Geeky Tiki's. They have this line of scenic Geeky Tiki's mugs that are quite large and have different Star Wars uh, locations on them. So you can see we've got uh, Hoth, Tatooine, Endor, Dagobah, Bespin, and most obviously Cantina, in addition to this one, which is obviously Jabba's Palace. They were pretty expensive, though, when they first came out. I think this was 35 or $40, something along those lines. And, I don't know, I just, I was like, mm, maybe I'll wait. And I'm kind of glad that I did, to be honest with you, because during Black Friday, this was reduced all the way down to $9.99 at Entertainment Earth. And so I went ahead and got one then. And you can see it's quite, quite large. Uh, I, I don't know how much liquid this actually holds. Does it say anywhere here? Nope. But it is, you know, it is quite large. I don't know how, you'd have to use probably, you know, a long straw and put some uh, exotic tropical fruits or something on it to make it really stand out if you're going to use this thing to drink out of. It's probably not an everyday kind of mug, but uh, I really do like the artwork on it. It goes well with all my existing geeky tikis that I have, so you know, of course I've done several videos about those in the past, but uh, yeah, I just thought it was cool to pick one of these up. Uh, you can probably still get them for maybe not that cheap, but a discounted price unless they've sold out. In the past, I made a whole video about my Jabba-related kids' pajamas from 1983. Uh, basically, these are the two that I had had in the package, and we've got one design with Jabba and Lando in his skiff guard outfit here, and then we've got also one with just Jabba on it. This one with Lando is in pretty nice shape, and you can see it's got the clips still on it, and it's nicely folded, like it's you know never been disturbed in its packaging or anything. This one here, though, is not in fantastic shape. It's got um, it's gotten messed up essentially, right? The the Package, the, the plastic packaging looks like it's shifted somehow. I don't think this was originally how it was arranged, and you can see it's kind of not folded up properly. But these are so rare that, you know, beggars can't be choosers, basically. However, recently, like in the last couple weeks, 
one of these actually appeared on eBay, which if you <laughs> if you're me, uh, is kind of notable because you can go for years and years without seeing any kind of vintage uh, Jabba related pajamas on eBay, and yet one came up in the package, so I had to go ahead and get it. And this is it right here. And you can see if you compare this to this, this one is obviously sort of in undisturbed condition. Uh, beyond that, though, it's also way sort of darker. Uh, this pigmentation seems like it's not been faded or anything. The red and the yellow here are much nicer than they are here. It's still got its clips that keep it in place, as you can see there. And interestingly, too, one reason <laughs> beyond the condition that I decided to get it was that it's actually a different version, because you can see this one is the uh, blue. It's got blue, like, uh, bottoms and sleeves, and this is the uh, yellow version. And that's the same, this one is also the yellow version. So I thought it was cool to be able to get another variation on it, and one that's in a nicer condition package. Probably nobody else cares, but I do. One other very quick item. I don't really collect autographs actively, but I do have a number of autographs in my collection, and I've kind of had it as a background goal of mine to get autographs from everyone who has played Jabba, you know, throughout TV and movies. So I've finally picked up this uh, Kevin Michael Richardson autograph from uh, The Clone Wars. He did, of course, Jabba in The Clone Wars. It's, it was very cheap, and I was the only bidder on it, I think. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little on the small side, but it is a, an actual autograph, and uh, I thought it was kind of cool to pick that up. I should probably make a video about all of my Jabba-related autographs at some point. All right, the next item we have here is actually some original artwork. This is a pencil drawing by Jim Bryson, who is an Emmy-winning artist who created the uh, show Nico and the Sword of Light, which I honestly am not really familiar with, but it's apparently pretty well-regarded animated show. And uh, this is, of course, Jabba as Santa Claus, or Jabba Claus. And you can see, if we look closely here, that it's just really well done. Lots of great detail. I love the, the overall design he's got here with the Jabba. <laughs> um, somehow having these tiny little feet in little boots. And he's got a uh, candy cane that he's looking there. Little little hats on both him and Salacious there. There's Salacious looking appropriately manic, clinging to his back, or I guess to this bag of goodies that he's got there. I just thought this was really cool. And I got this for almost nothing on eBay, just I guess because no one else bid on it. But it's just one of those things. Occasionally you get a really good deal. I think this is awesome. And uh, I really want to maybe frame it up in some sort of holiday-appropriate themed uh, frame, something like that. You know, I need to do that with a lot of the artwork that I have. Honestly, I've got a stack of stuff that I need to get framed and also have to find a place to display. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, I was pretty happy to find this. And uh, it's a little late for the season, I realize, but better late than never. Last but not least, we have a couple items that aren't actually related to Jabba, but they're kind of notable to me anyway, so I thought I would include them. And, you know, in the past I have uh, shown you some of the Sofubi soft vinyl figures that I've gotten. I have a very slow-moving collection of Sofubi figures that I've been picking up at a rate of like one or two a year sometimes. But uh, this one from artist and soft vinyl figure creator Mark Nagata really kind of spoke to me when he posted about it on his Instagram, which I'll link in the video description. He has all kinds of very interesting stuff, uh, sort of classic Japanese-style soft vinyl figures. Uh, this one is called a Kaiju Axelon, and I don't know, I really like the the rainbow gradient effect, of course, I'm a big sucker for, but also, just look at that face. Look at that face. <laughs> I just really like this guy. Uh, fully, well, fully, I say, five points of articulation uh, plus the tail, so you can move that up. Very, uh, very cool stuff. I really, I'm starting to get more and more into these uh, classic soft vinyl figures, and I just really like the aesthetic. Anyway, uh, got that guy, and then I also picked up, kind of in a similar vein, uh, this one here, which is the Gator Ron figure from Novel Keys. Novel Keys is a 
creator of mechanical keyboards and mechanical keyboard supplies, things like that. They're the ones that sold the um, Star Wars themed key set, the SA Tatooine key set that I used to create my own Star Wars keyboard. And, uh, you know, if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check that out. But I've kind of been getting heavily back into mechanical keyboards. And in fact, I have a mechanical keyboard themed Instagram. If you want to take a look at that, I'll put a link to that in the video description. But anyway, I saw that they heard, they had put this uh, figure on sale for Black Friday. So I decided to pick it up. It was like 20 bucks. And um, just to briefly explain what this even is, there's a company called Gatoron, or sometimes people say Gatoron, but for our purposes, we're going to say Gatoron that makes uh, key switches for mechanical keyboards. And so they decided to take that literally and make a gator named Ron, Gatoron, and have it be their mascot. You can have him be sort of the cool version with his hat in the back like I have it here, or you can have him get down to work and do it like that. This is actually attached with a magnet, so that's pretty cool. You can see he's got his name there, Ron, in case you forget. And he's also got very similar articulation, although his tail is not articulated. I just thought this was pretty cute. He's been, uh, you know, watching over my desk for a while now. So anyway, uh, this is going to be obviously my last video of 2022, and I really appreciate everyone watching and supporting my videos, going to my Instagram, and uh, I'm getting close to 3,000 subscribers on Instagram and 30,000 subscribers here, so I'd appreciate it if you haven't subscribed to one or the other of those to go ahead and do that, maybe put me over the edge, um, probably not before the end of the year, but definitely sometime in January, I think. Well, thanks for watching. That's going to be it for 2022. We'll see you again next year. And as usual, my thanks go out to my Patreon supporters, including Angelica Brady, Jesper Murtu, and the rest of my Palace VIP supporters, as well as everyone else who supports me there on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel on Patreon, you can do so by clicking the link in the video description. 